Hello, this is Philip G, and this is my evaluation for my media film, Warm Blooded. In what way does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and convention of real media products? Well, um, this same question will arise several times throughout the evaluation. For example, there's uh, many uses of dramatic irony where the audience we know that there is something threatening there, but the victim does not. We took a different convention of there being no blatant gore as we thought it would be more creative uh, to indicate the death or to suggest it. For example, we use silhouettes, which is quite challenging, but we thought worked quite well. Also, we included the first killing straight away in the film, which is shown in many other slashes, such as uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or any of the Halloween series. Also, we've included the conventional psychopathic masked murderer. For example, in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there is Leatherface. And also in Halloween series, there is Mike Myers. In our story synopsis, we have included the final girl, which is a typical slasher uh, convention. I have also found in my research that the antagonist actually dies from a, from a rather ironic death. And... Um, how our antagonist is going to die is going to be with fire, which is ironic because that's how he kills the victims before. Other than this, we have included the fear of unknown, which is from our audience research, was the biggest fear. And so that is why we've included a, an abandoned house, because as it is unknown, as it's abandoned, people don't know what's inside, which gives it that extra sense of enigma, which does scare people. Other than this, we've included psychopaths, which is also unknown, as people don't get a good insight into people with mental disorders. And other than this, we also found out that inescapable situations are a very big fear to our target audience. My group and I have also tried to develop a more of an interesting storyline, which our target audience in the audience research uh, actually said in previous slasher films there wasn't much of a storyline, and it seemed pretty pointless. But we believe that we've developed a... An interesting storyline which will keep the audience on the edge of the seats. So, to... As we've created a more of an enticing storyline, we believe that uncovering the antagonist's past that was in the abandoned house would be a good idea, as we get a better insight. So the fear of the unknown is sort of unravelled. The father of the antagonist was ironically a fireman, and he died trying to save teens who set fire in a house party, when the killer himself was only a child. And due to the depression his mother faced, she ended up committing suicide, leaving the antagonist alone and incapable of love, hence using fire as a weapon of death and his hate for teens and intruders. How does your media product represent particular social groups? In my group and I's film, we have a wide variety, from the young to the old, women, men, all of it, so we're not being prejudiced, biased, we've, we've got the lot, so we have a wide variety of viewers. But the victims that are in the film are young, as the target audience are mainly teenagers, that's who's going to be mainly in the film. Apart from the homeless man in the beginning, but people will empathise and feel sorry for the character. So we already, at the very beginning of, this, of the film, have a sense of urgency about the location as well as the killer. What kind of media institution might distribute your media product and why? My group and I have decided to go with a well-known indie distributor rather than a conglomerate as I do not believe that the true horror and fear comes from a large amount of money uh, but more of the ideas and creativity within the film. For example, um, Paranormal Activity had hardly any money produced into it and it's one of the most well-known horror films which has scared a large amount of audiences. Breaking Glass, so they plan on distributing up to 12 titles a year through their new speciality label, Vicious Circle Films, which is dedicated to extreme slasher material, which I think is our genre and we want to go down that road. They've distributed some great indie and micro-cinema films, including Brain Jacked, Sympathy and Ticked Off Trannies with Knives. Other than uh, this, I chose to go with an indie distributor as they're easier to get a hold of and tend to be more reliable, which I found from research, and uh, they seem to be like the people my group and I would find more enjoyable to work with, 
as it's not just about the money or the profit, but it's making a great film for yourself and for the audience and for the experience. Who would be the audience for your media product? Well, um, the slasher film in which my group is making has a target audience of people between age 15 to 30. This is a wide range of ages which are more likely to go to the cinema with friends or as couples who have the intention of being scared. The results I personally found were rather interesting, as the male participants preferred the violence and the gore in the slasher movies, whereas the girls enjoyed the films when with friends but weren't too fond of the violence and gore in general, but enjoyed the storyline and the scare. To ensure that I'd be pleasing both genders of the audience, there has been a limited amount of violence, with more creativity as I mentioned at the beginning, so everyone will be happy and satisfied. How would I attract or address my audience? Well, like I've just said, I want, um, as my target audience of both genders, I will uh, keep gore, but not on an over-the-top level, and will still include some interesting and creative storylines uh, to entice both the male and the female audiences. And also, um, through my audience research, I found that both males and females wanted more realism within the slasher to give a better effect. And to do this, the actual location we chose was all authentic, everything was there, we were able to film there legally which is good so we've been able to keep the realism within the slasher to give a better effect. So we've been able to give the audience what they want which is the main objective for our film. What we also found from the audience research on how to address them, um, both genders gave a similar response to what do you fear question. And the idea of fire, inescapable situations, have interested me and have challenged my group and I to be more wary and focused on bringing these fears out throughout the film and emphasising them to bring their fears to life, as it were. In uh, our synopsis, fire was originally supposed to be used at the beginning of the film, but because of safety hazards and whatnot, we decided it wasn't the best thing. And but would be used later on in the film if we were a professional film company then that would be what would happen but unfortunately because of our age because of the school safety and so on we were unable to use fire unfortunately this time but we are still very happy with the outcome and so are the audience who have viewed it what have you learned about the technologies from the process of constructing this product well as it's a media subject We've learnt a lot through the technologies and how important and how specific each job of each technological equipment actually helps towards the filmmaking itself. Even using Facebook to promote our film and to get feedback was great help in further editing to make further adjustments. And also WordPress, where we blogged all of our information our upcoming events and so on really did give a better insight to online technologies and how we can actually distribute our own media to whom we want to and how to receive and how to improve. So overall these technologies were very helpful and was really worthwhile knowing how to use them in a more better and useful way. Also my group and I have especially found that there is a lot more in-depth editing than GCSE work. For example, there's a lot more precise on timing, the flowing, also having to cut a lot to keep to the two minutes and yet still remain in continuity and being able to do so, not losing the plot and the effect of the film. So I thought that challenged my group <laughs> pretty much to the extent, but I think it was a good lesson learning and it really did make the film better, I believe, keeping it to that set of time through the editing. The editing was on iMovie HD on the Apple Macintoshes in the school media suite and as the Apple Macintoshes are fully up to date with I believe is some of the best editing software you can find I believe that we're very lucky for the fact we can use this technology and learn how to use it in a more effective way and I think that's also another thing that's emphasised specific effects in the film to create the atmosphere, the tension and without that I don't think, without the process of the constructing this product, would not would not be nearly as effective without the editing and the technology we had. To. Other than this, um, having to use non-copyright material and using all of our own sounds. 
um, also using copyright free material that iMovie provides. It was worthwhile practice for future products, um, as of course we won't be able to use copyrighted material, which is a good lesson to learn earlier on, then you know you have worthwhile practice and so you have more knowledge on the aspect of having to use your own creative ideas or your own use of technology and therefore you know it is your product and you feel more proud of it and also the obvious uh, meaning of not using copyright is that you don't get sued but on the, on the process of constructing this product the technologies were very worthwhile in using and really did make the film a lot better than we thought it would be Last, but certainly not least, looking back at your preliminary task, what do you feel you have learnt in the progression from it to the full product? Well, from my own experience at the beginning of the year, the preliminary task helped understand how effective these kinds of shots are used in slasher film context, as it can emphasise the action used throughout the film, which is a pretty much self-explained shot, the match on action shot. And also the faults we made during the pre preliminary tasks, um, we could fix and alter and know how to improve on the actual filming days. And so we had a better knowledge of what is compulsory in our films, per se. We also learned how to do a short reaction shot, 180 degree rule. And we managed to emphasise on what we did to really bring what these shots were used for, for tension, for dramatic irony, and for a better flow of continuity. So I believe the preliminary task did really help in this sense as we were a lot more prepared for the actual shooting day or the, and the planning, as it were. So, yeah, very beneficial for us as a group and for the filmmaking as a whole. Thank you for watching.